What's up, Scrapyard? Hope you guys are doing good today. I know a lot of you guys love the commentary that I've been giving you guys, and I genuinely enjoy doing it. I hope you guys are learning a lot from it. So for today's video, it's gonna be kind of similar, but it's not gonna be commentary oriented. Instead, I'd like to share with you guys ranked tips and tricks that I've learned over the seasons that have allowed me to become a 14 times apex predator. So get your pen and paper, take some notes, Without further ado, let's get into it. Bam ba bam 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 Welcome back y'all. I'm going to give you guys five major tips and tricks on how to play ranked. If you implement these tips into your gameplay, you're going to gain more RP, I promise. Because a lot of people play ranked mindlessly. They don't think about anything, whether they're solo queuing or not. Mindless gameplay is a reason why they struggle with gaining RP. So if you follow these tips and tricks, it should help you in that sense. Rank tip number one, rotations. What do I mean by rotations? Rotating is a tactic within battle royales and it is done regularly to put you and your team in an extremely advantageous position. And there are two effective ways to do it, early rotations and late rotations. We'll talk about late rotations first because I know a lot of the time I say it's bad. That's just my own philosophy, but it's still an extremely effective method. I just prefer early rotating. So I'll quickly explain both of them and you can decide which one might work best for you. Late rotations are exactly that, rotating late within the storm. It's pretty much done when you land on the edge of the map. Maybe you take a fight off rip, maybe you don't. And you're pretty much rotating to the next circle within the storm. And while you do that, you're either looting or replicating, doing whatever you can to get you in a good position for end game. The effective part about it is that you're in storm. Most other people won't be in storm. So you avoid fights this way. And you pretty much allow the rest of the lobby to kill each other out. While you sit safely in storm, crafting, looting, whatever it is. It's a good tactic for placement. And it's what several comp pro teams do. With this method, they're able to place well and win a lot of money doing that. So like I said, it's a smart way to rotate. But Apex ranked isn't comp. And it's a tad bit overkill for ranked. So the more practical method of rotation would be early rotating. This is what I do every game. So I'll land at my POI, hopefully take a fight off rip, and as first ring begins to close, I'm already moving up to second ring. And I do so by staying on the edge of the ring. When I'm rotating into the next circle, I stay on the perimeter or the edge of that circle. Never rotate straight to the middle of the circle. That's bad because you open yourself to third parties all around you, 360 degrees all around you. And it makes it very difficult to withstand a lot of fights within that position because you could be attacked from any front. So when you rotate, stay on the edge of the ring and then work your way in from there. And that's the best way to do it. You're able to get a look at what's going on within the circle while maintaining a safe position on the edge of the ring. With the storm on your back, more often than not, you won't get third party from that side. So you only have to focus on one direction and that's right in front of you. Like I said, again, you'll rotate and work your way inwards from there. As always, make sure you guys are looking at the video too. You can see perfect examples of that throughout the whole game. The second rank tip will be about fighting. This is not a tip to help you win your 1v1s or to be more effective in fighting, but knowing what fights to take and what fights to avoid. The best fight you could possibly take is a fight off rip, but pay attention to where other enemy teams land next to you. It's important to know stuff like that because it'll tell you the amount of time that you have to take that fight off rip if somebody lands with you. If a third party team lands relatively close to you guys, maybe you shouldn't fight that team because if it takes too long, you're gonna get third party. And I see too many lower skilled, lower ranked players landing directly on a team. That right there is what we call a hardcore 50-50. And I don't really like that because you leave it up to the RNG gods at that point. But as a seasoned veteran, I laugh all the time when I see two, three teams land directly on each other's head. When I see that, that's free KP for me. I'm gonna land next to them, sometimes even in the same POI. Loot a couple bins, and I'm gonna third party them. And I walk away with four or five KP off rip all the time because of that. So for all you people struggling out there with rank, do not land directly on other teams' heads. Land in the same POI, that's fine. But don't land exactly on them. Do not 50-50 them like that. That's how you lose major amounts of RP in such a short amount of time. As you progress throughout the game, there are going to be fights that you should and shouldn't take. And at that point, it's a bit difficult to tell you guys what fights you should and shouldn't take during the middle of the game or a later game because it's extremely situational. But in general, fights that are good to take are going to be the ones on the edge of the ring. Now, I know I told you guys that you guys should be rotating to the edge of the ring, and I still mean that. That's what you should be doing. When it comes to taking fights in the middle of the game, that's also where you want to be taking fights. Again, because more often than not, those fights are going to be secluded and you won't have to worry about as many third parties. So as you rotate throughout the map, those are the fights that you want to take on the edge of the ring. Fights that you want to avoid would be in the middle of the ring. Again, because you can get third party from any direction. Other good fights that you should be taking are third parties. But you also have to be careful because third parties can turn to fourth parties and fifth parties very quickly. So when you do push third parties, wait for them to get a couple knocks. Because with the more people that are knocked, the easier it becomes for you and your team to clean it up. Free KP at that point. More RP, better placement, better ranks. And although third parties are great fights to take, 
you can't be heavily reliant on third parties. You're gonna sometimes have to initiate fights as well. It's good for improving your skill, boosting up your confidence, and it allows you to play patiently. And what I mean by that is, let's say you're in top seven placement with zero KP, and you still have a fat negative. At that point towards the end game, it's very difficult to take fights. So you're playing in the third and fourth ring with zero KP, still negative, you're probably going to push stupid fights. You get a little antsy, you get a little impatient, and it's at that point where things tend to go south for you. That's why it's important to initiate fights, good fights. So when end game comes, you have a few KP and all you have to worry about is rotating. I hope you guys understand that because that's a really good tip. Do not be afraid to initiate fights. This tip is just reminding you to be smart in the fights that you choose to take. Which leads me to the third rank tip, disengaging. So you find yourself in a fight, you've listened to my tips, you're choosing to pick smarter fights, you're fighting more on the edge of the ring as opposed to inside the middle of the ring. The fight's not really going anywhere. Just because you're on the edge of the ring does not mean you're not going to get third party. The likelihood of it is just less as opposed to if you were in the middle of the ring. So you're fighting on the edge of the ring mid game and like I said it's not going anywhere. You guys are trading damage but nobody's doing anything, nobody's pushing, essentially almost just wasting your time. There are a lot of low ranked players that will sit there the entire time doing absolutely nothing, overstaying their stay and then after waiting several minutes they finally push that team but because it took so damn long now they're gonna get third party and that happens a lot and that's the reason why a lot of low rank players are losing a lot of RP and a lot of their fights because they don't know how to disengage from a fight in a situation like that honestly it's just best to disengage or run away go take a fight elsewhere sometimes though if you do take long enough and you do get third party be sure to disengage and you want to disengage enough so that that third party focuses the other team and not you so now the third party is fighting the initial team that you were fighting and because you disengage you can now in turn third party them wait for a couple of knocks and clean it up that's why knowing how to disengage is important because you grant yourself a new perspective of that fight and potentially open other opportunities that would allow you to either third party that team or to run away and fight another fight let's say one team is just rolling you guys and your teammate gets knocked just because your teammate gets knocked does not mean you have to go immediately save them because if the enemy knocks a player on your team that's when most players will get aggressive so if you're weak or if you don't have enough loot or you're just losing the fight in general disengage and back up i know it sucks that jimmy john john just died but it's better than your entire team dying disengage back up see if a potential third party is going to come which most of the time they do and try to grab your teammates banner at that point and if you can do that then do that but if you can't again keep disengaging although you want to be captain save a hoe it's not the smartest thing to do all the time so start learning how to disengage more often and better the fourth tip is going to be about legend selection this is something that a lot of lower skilled individuals struggle with and it holds them back in rank so much i know john john you love mirage bro i know frankie poo mad maggie's your favorite but a poor legend composition can explain a lot of the struggles in lower ranked players. Because the fact of the matter is, there's a meta every season, and that meta exists because it's strong and effective. Let's look at this season's meta for example. You're gonna have a lot of Gibbies, a lot of Valkyries, and a lot of Seers. Why? Because it's effective. And in the hands of a good player, it's literally guaranteed RP. So while you're finding a bunch of Gibbies, a bunch of Valkyries, a bunch of Horizons, a bunch of Seers, very strong legends, and you're using Rampart, Maggie, and Fuse, I don't fucking know. You're putting yourself at an extreme disadvantage by using weak characters. Again, I know they may be your favorite legend, you have a lot of fun playing with them, but if you're trying to improve and the games aren't going well based on the legends that you love and that you're using, maybe it's time to switch it up. All in all, no matter the meta, no matter the map, legends that are good for gaining RP and just for playing ranked in general include, but not limited to, Wraith, Horizon, Loba, Gibby, Valk, Caustic, Seer, Ash, Bloodhound, Bangalore, etc. So if you're playing with a full squad, you want to choose a versatile legend composition. That means maybe one defensive or recon legend, a movement legend that can get your team out of trouble quickly. And if you do that, then the third pick can be pretty much whatever you want. Somebody that you're comfortable with, or maybe just a support legend. Legend comp matters, and it could be a reason as to why you are struggling to gain RP and rank. For the last rank tip, Ring tip number five, end game. So you've listened to all of my tips. You've been making it to end game more often. What should you do? Every situation is different, but I'll do my best to explain it generally. Ideally in end game, you'll want one of two things. You'll want either control of the circle on one side, meaning that you're the only team on that side of the circle and everybody else alive in end game is in front of you. Or you want a position of high ground, usually a building or a platform. Somewhere that makes it very difficult for you to be pushed. Again, there's gonna be a lot of times where you can't get either of those, but in general, that's what you're looking for in endgame. A nice beautiful building and late game circle, so you're covered and it's hard to be pushed, or to have complete circle control on one side of the ring. And if you do that, you put yourself in a great position to at least get top two. You don't have to win every game, and in fact, you won't. Pros don't even win every game. But if you can practice with these tips and begin to play more consciously and less mindlessly, you're gonna make it a top five way more often, which is gonna help you guys gain a lot more RP and to ultimately help you reach the rank that you desire.
As always, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And yeah, I hope you guys use these tips to help you get the rank that you want next season. Best of luck, and I'll see you guys next time. Bam, ba, bam, bam, bam. Bam, ba, bam, 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 ba, bam, 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 b